That day, my daughter was killed by a, a drunk driver, and that was the turning point for me um, to just really focus on getting my life together, um, being an example for other people. I was in the trucking industry. I wasn't, you know, being a good representation of that industry. Um, and so I knew I had to change. You're listening to Freight Famous, presented by Rose Rocket, bringing you the people that make trucking move from behind the scenes into the limelight. Here's your host, Justin Bailey. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Freight Famous, a podcast produced by Rose Rocket. New episodes of Freight Famous will be released twice a month. On this podcast, we talk with guests about how they build, scale, and automate their trucking and transportation businesses. I'm your host, Justin Bailey. I'm the co-founder at Rose Rocket. I'm absolutely thrilled today and couldn't wait to meet our next guest, um, Dee Sova. Dee is currently a CDL instructor at Prime Inc. and a Highway Diamonds coordinator. During 2022, she was added to the Woman in Motion Speakers Bureau through the American Trucking Association. Throughout her career, she has been a spokesperson and has been interviewed with Tamron, uh, on the Tamron Hall Show on CNN uh, and NBC Nightly News. From 2019 to 2020, she was also an America's road team captain through the American Trucking Association, representing professional drivers across the U.S., speaking on panels, as well as with legislators and senators. 2015, she became an independent contractor for Prime Inc., and in 2017, became Prime Inc.'s Highway Diamond of the Year. That same year, she became one of three women to earn the Queen of the Road trophy through the Real Women in Trucking organization. In 2013, Dee became an over-the-road driver and started a Facebook page for women drivers called Trucking Divas Rock. She was also served on MAD's board of directors and was a high school speaker for the organization after her daughter was tragically killed by a drunk driver. Welcome, Dee. Thank you so much for having me. I sound so important when you read it off like that. That is, uh, that's, I, I would agree, and I think part of what we want to have on today is just to talk through a lot of the things that were on there. I, you know, I think on, on this show, we talk to a lot of um, people who sit in positions of um, maybe senior leadership, uh, business owners and, and, and entrepreneurs. Um, we don't get to speak to, and we were just talking about this in, in sort of our planning as we're planning at this, you know, next kind of quarter shows of um, people who are doing the work in which we're talking about so much. And I think that, yes. you know, this is a really great opportunity to, to connect with somebody who's, who's done a ton, not just in terms of doing the work, but um, representing it, uh, promoting it, uh, standing behind it. And so I really just want to lean into to you and, and to all the things that you're doing. And, and I think that our listeners are going to get tremendous value um, from hearing your perspective um, because, we, you know, we do spend specifically around drivers. We spend a ton of time on, on, on this show and within our industry talking about how to attract drivers, how to retain drivers, how to, um, you know, take care of drivers. But I almost categorically never hear it from a driver. And so mm. I think this is a great chance to really talk to somebody who knows because uh, you've done it, you do it. And, and you know, that's, uh, you know, who better to say it, I guess. Well, you know, there's a lot going on in the trucking industry. It certainly has changed. Um, from the time that I started back in 1991, equipment is better, technology is better, and there's more and more women coming into the industry, um, which, you know, it's a good thing, but there are challenges to women coming into the industry, and any woman who does, she has to be strong enough and willing to accept those challenges and understand that she brings a lot to the table. So going back to 2011, what what brought you here? How did you end up sitting here with me? Ooh, 2000. Um, what happened in 2011? Um, well, at that point, I had quite a few, a couple of decades um, in the trucking industry. I had um, gone through the loss of a child. I had a daughter who was killed by a drunk driver, which led me to getting involved with Mothers Against Drunk Driving because she really was an extraordinary child. 
I mean, I was blessed to be her mother. Um, when she was two years old, she told me she wanted to be a doctor and her grades reflected that her entire life. That was actually in 2003 when she was um, killed by a drunk driver. This happened right in front of her high school. Um, but anyway, when she was in kindergarten, a wealthy family came in there with their colleagues. They picked 26 kids. They wanted to monitor all the way through high school. And if they kept their grades up, their promise was, we'll pay for your high school education, uh, your college education, excuse me. Um, and she was one of 16 kids that remained in the program. And over the years, they provided her with tutors. They took her on expensive trips to like Hawaii. And then they included my youngest daughter. They even paid for my kids to be in private school and exposed them to doctors, lawyers, uh, people who were financially successful. Basically, what they were doing was grooming my kids. Uh, when we lost her, it was such a tragedy. She was such an extraordinary um, young woman, and I'm not saying it because she was my daughter. She literally was extraordinary. And um, so what prompted me to get involved with Mothers Against Drunk Driving is because of that grade of a loss. Um, she impacted her community. She was also a volunteer. Um, and so I wanted to be able to give back in a way that people would never forget her. That led me to um, getting on uh, interviews in my local television station. Her story was televised. Um, by Dr. Laura. Um, I was on, uh, you remember the show Celebrity Rehab? I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you do. Okay. I did an episode on Celebrity Rehab to where I got to meet Dennis Rodman, Heidi Fleiss, um, several celebrities just being able to tell my story. And I realized at that time that I am supposed to be a speaker. Um, some people do it and, you know, they get paid for it. And other people, it's a real passion. When you have a story like that, you know, it needs to be heard. And so I got involved with Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Um, that was a great experience for me because one, it taught me how to give back. At that time, I wasn't the best person, even though I was a professional driver. I wasn't living right. Um, I was in a relationship that wasn't going anywhere. Um, and it led me to, you know, doing things like smoking pot and drinking alcohol, all the things you're not supposed to do as a professional driver. Um, prior to that, I was married to my children's father and he became addicted to drugs, which is why we separated in the first place. But getting into this other relationship, now my life is starting to get out of control. And on my 37th birthday, I told myself this was gonna be my last time partying. So I went out, got drunk that night. Um, that hangover rolled all the way into my work week. At the time, I was working for a contractor for FedEx Ground. Tuesday morning, um, after all that partying I did, my 17-year-old asked if she could use my car. I was still raising her and her sister, who was 15 at the time. And I told her no, because I had bills to pay. And all the way to school that morning, it became an argument. And when we got to the school and I let my two daughters out of the car, neither one of us said our usual I love you or goodbye. They ran off into school and I scurred out the parking lot mad because, you know, they are questioning my decision. I had bills to pay. That day, my daughter was killed by a, a drunk driver. And that was the turning point for me um, to just really focus on getting my life together, um, being an example for other people. I was in the trucking industry. I wasn't, you know, being a good representation of that industry. Um, and so I knew I had to change. She was too good of a person for me to not get myself together and be a representation, not only for her, for Mothers Against Drunk Driving and also for the trucking community. So that is what started my um, career, if you will, aside from trucking um, on the speaking. That led to so many other things like, um, being involved with MAD, I was able to go to the White House for the first time. Uh, being involved with MAD, I, I spoke at high schools, 
while driving uh, full time in California. So I spoke at a lot of high schools in California and I was able to do this for 10 years. During the course of that time, I realized while I was on stage, I was actually healing. Um, I had gotten my youngest daughter into counseling because I knew that if I didn't do that right after she saw her sister being killed, um, she was going to be a mess. So the scholarship that would have went to my other daughter, it went to her and she was able to go to college for free and get her bachelor's degree in journalism. She turned around and um, went back to school to get her master's degree. Last year, I was able to fly back to California and witness that. Um, and she's just an extraordinary um, example of someone who is like a phoenix rising from the ashes. She inspires me every single day. Um, she is now a dean uh, of, of institutional effective for the California community colleges, and I couldn't be more proud. I myself, after my daughter was killed, had to go into therapy um, for five sessions. I realized after the fifth session, it wasn't for me because this person was just having me sit on this couch. They weren't giving me any feedback um, and I just wasn't getting anything from that. So I realized that those 10 years that I was on stage for Mothers Against Drunk Driving, that was my therapy because every time I spoke at these high schools, at the end of the speech, these kids would come down and I'm talking 1,500, 2,500 at some schools. Um, they would have the whole school in their auditorium. They would come down out of the bleachers and literally come to give me a hug and tell me how inspiring um, the story was. And then there were some kids who would tell me that, hey, I've been sneaking out, you know, from school, I'm cutting class and I'm going to hang out with my friends or whatever they were doing. These kids were drinking and some of them were doing um, things like uh, hard uh, cocaine and, you know, stuff like that. So it became a uh, sort of like a coaching thing that I was doing with these kids. It almost happened at every single high school after telling her story. So that's when I knew that I knew that I knew I was doing something that I was passionate about and that I was called to do. Oh, oh okay. Um, that's, uh, <laughs> I know it's heavy. It's, it's heavy. heavy. It's heavy, but it's, it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I wanted to just for a clerical, uh, there, I, I mentioned 2011 only cause I thought I heard you say 2011 and I think I was just looking at, there's so many dates in front of me here. So I, I just for any confusion to the listener, when I said that you kind of had the timeline, quite frankly, the timeline to this is, is not what's important anyway. So just want to throw, let's get that out. And, and I think, um, I mean, what do I even go from that? So. As you sit here today, uh, and so how, so sorry, I know, again, there's just a lot of timelines there. So, so we are um, many years removed from, from that tragedy. You have, you have since gone on to, um, you know, do a, a lot of other things. What is it now that is driving you to continue on this path? What is it that, 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 that keeps you going? Um, because the, 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 the enthusiasm and, and the confidence, it comes through the, the, the microphone. And I don't know where you are right now. We're far away from each other physically, but it's like, I can feel it. Like, what, what is it that's, where's this, this spirit coming from? And how do you have this, again, enthusiasm? Well, I have a strong faith in God, number one. Um, number two, as I mentioned about my daughter, she was just that extraordinary. Um, and if I didn't change um, after losing her. That would have been a shame on my part um, to not be somebody who can impact change. Ten years after um, she was killed by a drunk driver, I was a local driver in California during that time, but I found myself in orientation, not here at Prime, but at Swift Transportation. I drove for them for two years. I had met my husband during the course of all of this. We worked for the same company. I ended up leaving FedEx Ground and we worked for the same company, but we were in different cities. But my job as a truck driver would lead me to his 
warehouse where he was the supervisor. And so we just started hanging out for lunch. And that lunch went from 30 minutes to an hour to two hours. And I was like, oh, my God, I left one night and I was like, I think I love this guy. (laughs) Um, He came into my life literally a year and a half after my daughter was killed. And he loved me through the process of um, losing her. He changed who I was as a woman, as a person, um, how I, you know, did everything. And I have to talk about him because my husband is no longer with me. Um, He was in my life for as long as my daughter was alive, 17 years. We would have celebrated our 18th anniversary on August 4th. Unfortunately, last March, Um, March 11th, to be exact, my husband had a massive heart attack and he died on our patio. And let me tell you, when you lose a child and then you lose your best friend, it's so easy to just go into this depression where you cannot pick yourself up. But all of those lessons that I learned all of those years ago when I lost my daughter, I now had to apply that towards losing my husband. Prior to losing him three months before that, we moved my mother from Louisiana to here in Springfield, Missouri, where I am. Um, Three months after he had a heart attack, my mother found out she had stage four breast cancer. For the last six months, um, I've buried my husband. Um, It's been over six months, but for the last six months, my mother has been in and out of the hospital. And I'm telling you, when you, when these things start happening, you start questioning what is happening with my life. I view it as everything that happens in your life, it happens for a reason. And for me, I have to be strong because I am now, um, I left SWIFT. I worked with them for two years. They supported my Walk Like Matt event every year when I raised a certain amount of money, they would match that. They did that for two years, but in the end, it was not a good fit for me. I needed a company um, that really celebrated their drivers. I wanted to be in a company that had more women drivers and Prime has almost, uh, Prime Inc. has almost 1,500 women. I needed to feel like I was a part of a team and I was not getting that, you know, over there. And I'm not going to say anything more than that. But when I came here to Prime, I didn't think that my daughter's story was going to mean anything, but I found out that um, having a background as a speaker, it can also help the company. So Prime started sending me out to their customers to speak to their customers. Um, 2017, you mentioned the things that I've been able to do. 2017, I won their Highway Diamond of the Year Award. 2018, I got on the Driver Advisory Board where you get to sit down with our CEO, Robert Lowe. You get to uh, sit with all the department heads and you get to hear the business of the company. Most drivers are out doing their job. They don't get to see the numbers, the crashes, the this is what we spent for this amount of equipment or those types of things. So being on that driver advisory board, I got to bring the concerns, myself and several other drivers of the drivers to the board and they were um, working on fixing those things. That was a two year commitment. In 2019, they nominated me to be on what's called America's Road Team through the American Trucking Associations. Prime is a member of the American Trucking Association, so all of those members can nominate their drivers to be on their team. Um, I said 2019, that was 2018, I'm sorry. But um, it's been an incredible journey um, to be able to now give back to the industry that I've loved for almost 32 years and being able to help our students come through our training program um, has been a real treat for me. Having had all of the losses that I told you about earlier, it really serves um, them because there are gonna be things that are gonna be happening out of their control while they're out on the road. And you know, when you're a brand new student coming into a training program, you're not thinking about all of that. 
you know, you think I'm in this truck. Yes, I'm going to be all over the country. You don't think that anything is going to happen. And I certainly hope that it does not the way that things have happened for me. But in the event, I get to tell my story to every one of the students that come through our training program. I don't do it because I want them to feel sorry for me. This is my way of creating this stage to give them information that will help them if and when that time comes in their life where they lose a loved one or something is happening at home. Instead of panicking, this is how you deal with it. Your fleet manager is going to have to route you back home. They can't just stop everything, snap you back to your home state. So it gives me a platform to be able to educate them in a different way. And I love being able to mentor them. I make my students fall in love with me. I don't know what other trainers do. Um, I get to do the classroom instruction and the behind the wheel. And I make them fall in love with trucking because It is an industry that will absolutely serve you if you do your job, you know, and so I want them to be professional. I want them to understand what that professionalism entails. It's not that you're just a steering wheel holder. You're somebody who is making a difference. You are providing a necessary service. We learned through COVID how valuable drivers are. And um, I don't think that the average person realizes what it takes to do this job. So when they come through this training program, I'm able, able to give them the tools they need to be successful. And so that's my little journey in a nutshell. I know it's a lot, um, but I don't see myself as anything more than the average person, I've learned as a result of losing my daughter that you have to pay it forward. Um, Whatever it is that you do in your life, if you have learned a skill or you have learned a trait, you have got to be able to pass that thing on to the next person. You never know whose life is being inspired just by watching you do what you do. So if you can give them nuggets along the way, you know, it's only going to help to produce a better person. That's what we want. We want better, safer drivers um, as far as the trucking community is concerned. And uh, the other part of it for me is really driver retention. You know, I've learned a lot about those words, you know, in the last couple of years being on America's road team. Uh, we've we've had a driver shortage for years. There's not enough equipment out there. You know, they can't produce enough trucks for the amount of people now wanting to come into the trucking industry. And so a lot of times it becomes a, a team situation. And I also get to, you know, prepare our students for what that is like as well. And so it's just been a great, incredible journey for me. And I absolutely love what I do. If I can pull a thread or two from that, I would, I would like to, and I'm going to. Um, talking about driver retention, because I think there is a lot of dialogue. It's, it's, it's sort of a, it's almost a common, uh, the driver short. I, I mean, I've been in, in trucking not as long as you, but for, um, I don't know, 15 years, call it. And I've been hearing about driver shortage for a very long time. And I think driver shortage is interesting because in um, tight markets that's short and in markets like today, there's probably more drivers than needed. And you, you actually made an interesting call. That there's, there's an equipment shortage today, which is kind of leading to a, a huge issue, I think, in this space. And so it's, uh, it's, um, it's dynamic, we'll say, in terms of the driver shortage. But I think something that I personally have not probably spent enough time thinking about as it, as, it, as it pertains to serving this show and serving this audience is is driver retention. And you just kind of hit on that. And I guess I, I wonder if what is it that companies are, and, and you know, not, a, not to name a specific company, but sort of at a high level as you're traveling around and you're meeting all these people and, and especially in the space and just really living and breathing this, what are companies getting wrong about this? What is it, what is, what is so um, hard about retaining the driver or what do they need to do better uh, to do that? And I don't know if that's an easy or, or I'm sure it's a hard answer, but I'd be really interested in your opinion. Well, it's kind of one of those, um, you really got to know your drivers, number one. And the other thing is you got to pay people. You know, you can't expect to not pay someone uh, for work that they do that, um, 
requires them to be away from their friends and their family for long periods of time. Marriages are at stake here. Your children are growing up. They're growing up without a mom or a father. These things have to be thought about. So you got to give drivers time off when they need the time off. It is a job that can quickly burn a person out if not dealt with correctly. Um, The beautiful thing about um, over the road trucking, no matter what company you work for, is you pretty much can take your home time anywhere. Some people will choose to go home. Some people, you know, maybe they want to be along the beach in California. I don't know. But you got to kind of know your drivers and be willing to work with where they are. Um, and, and, And the other thing is, What about showing your drivers how they can be successful? We have a tendency to want to just hire people in these companies, but we're not giving them a proper career path. Maybe they come in as a company driver, but one day they want to own their own truck. Can they own their own truck through your company? Are you willing to show them the path to how that happens? Prime does a great job at communicating that career path. You know, and and just establishing this rapport and relationship with their drivers to the point where they're holding on to drivers. And I'm not saying we're not losing people because we are, too. And this is happening all over the country because a lot of times drivers don't realize what it takes to do this job. And so they realize they're away from their family and their loved ones a little bit longer than they expected. And then they're like, I can't do it. And, you know. That's going to keep that wheel spinning of constantly turning over drivers. It doesn't matter what company it it is, but being able to communicate effectively with your driver, you know, fleet managers, first of all, recruiters need to tell drivers the truth when they're coming to apply for this job. You want to do more than just get them in there. You want to tell them the truth about what they can expect. From this career, you know, I don't know how many women will come into the trucking industry without an idea of what all this entails. And then they find themselves getting right out of it as soon as they get their CDL because they realize I'm going to be away from my home too long. So what they end up doing is they'll leave a company that is over the road predominantly and they'll go find a local job within their city. And it suits their needs. It's not that they're leaving the trucking industry. So maybe as the times are changing, maybe we need to do something different in terms of getting our drivers home because a happy driver is going to be a more dependable driver. If you're not paying that driver according to their worth, like you're not going to pay a driver with 10 years the same amount that you're going to pay a driver with one year. You know, just being able to be fair when it comes to that pay. Um, Women are still fighting to earn, you know, the same pay. And trucking is an industry that can absolutely allow it. But there is a company by company basis where, you know, it's just not equal pay and it should be. And the other part is we got to protect our women. You know, women are multitaskers, if you will. And so it's it's just naturally a part of who we are. We would make great drivers in this industry for a company that is willing to understand that that woman is different. She has different needs. Um, even though she's a multitasker, she has this thing that happens every month. And if you're over 50, you're going through menopause and all of these things that, that we don't think about. Instead, we want to put them all in the same basket with every driver. And you just can't do that. You know, women are statistically safer driver than men. I have to throw that out there. And so why wouldn't you want to capitalize on building that woman's career, helping her to be successful. These are basic things. You know, these trucking companies are making millions of dollars um, off of the sacrifice and the time of drivers who love what they do, but they're not getting compensated properly. And that's just simply not fair. And and coming into 2023, that's something that we need to um, pay attention to. Also, when women are coming into this industry, making sure they're in an environment um, where they're safe and feel protected. You've got to find out what your drivers need from you as a whole and then find out what your drivers need from you 
individually. And that's where fleet managers need to come in and build that relationship with their drivers so that they can help with that driver retention. Yeah, so we had Ellen Voya um, on the show last year. So she's the founder of a Women in Trucking. And, and she- I know her. I bet you do. And uh, she, <laughs> she mentioned a lot of the same things you just did and, and a lot of the same even data around women being safe for drivers. And she explained it in a really, you know, basically it was sort of an estrogen versus testosterone way, but it made a lot of sense to yes. me. I was like, oh, that is yes. so obvious when you say it like that. And mm -hmm. and I and I get and she said you know a similar similar sentiment around just um, what women need to feel you know feel feel safe and there is a difference but it's also it's also an untapped market in terms of you know trying to find more drivers and, and these types of things so I, I I hear all of that and and I think that there's I think what we said if I could kind of like just like capture it in some bullet points it was um, it was you know pay the drivers fairly. It is mm -hmm. um, whether that's through wages and or benefits, it, but it's also this this really common decency play of treat them fairly and and treat them yes. as human beings. And because you said mm -hmm. like the drivers between Prime and JB Hunt and Knight Swift and whatever it is, they're different. But really, if you even look at it at Prime, each individual drivers are human beings, and it yes. almost feels like sometimes in this market they're they're almost commoditized, like as if they're mm -hmm. somehow other than they're thought about as like the drivers, like, you know, I almost say it like that. It's almost like this currency almost, right? Where it's like, yeah, one leaves, one comes like the drivers, but these are, these are human beings with families, with feelings, with all of the things. And I think it's, it applies to, I almost feel like we do a disservice by not calling them employees or team members. And so they kind of are bucketed with everybody else. Cause it's almost like you have everyone else and then you have the drivers, but it's mm -hmm. like, in some ways, you're doing a disservice by not putting them on career paths and not putting them on just treating them like you would someone else who maybe wears just because they, they sit behind a wheel versus wear you know shiny shoes and a white shirt to work doesn't make them any less human. And they still Absolutely. want the same things anybody else would. You would think, of course, you would. It's, it's nothing. Yeah. It's not, it's not that complicated, really, when you when you put it that way. Um, I do want to turn that, and I want to hear a bit about. Trucking Divas Rock. So let's, uh, this is, I've got a note that I've been say to call this out. What is that? Well, um, Trucking Divas Rock was my business name while I was out on the road um, as an independent contact tractor. Um, but a few years back, I decided to have a separate page um, because I, I started when I um, was getting towards the end of local driving. I started having all these women uh, contact me because I was on YouTube. Um, they wanted to know how to get into the trucking industry. And it was, they found me on Facebook. And so now my whole personal page is having this whole discussion about trucking. And my daughter seen it, the one who went back and got her master's degree. And she was like, you need to start another page where you are only talking to these women, not just women, but you know, other drivers who want this information. And so what I did was I started a page on Facebook called Trucking Divas Rock. Um, at one point I was only collecting, you know, the stories of women drivers, but now I'm posting everything that has to do with the trucking industry. And if there are women, um, who are a part of the story that I'm posting, then they're going on there. And the reason why I did that is because I really want people to be informed. I wanted to have this community where, and that was in 2015, I believe that I started Trucking Divas Rock. And so I wanted them to have a community where they can go and not only pick my brain, but there's so many other drivers out there who have wisdom and insight and they might even work for your company, but you guys are not crossing paths. So maybe if you come on this page, you know, you can talk about whatever. And I've had plenty of these drivers who have um, met each other on the page and then became friends. Several of these people are still friends to this day, whether they're women or just women and men, they're drivers. And so you got to find a way to connect with your drivers in a way that they're going to want to stay with you. What is going to make them want to stay with your company? Are you serving your drivers? If you could look at your drivers as if they were your customers, 
those drivers are your heartbeat. And so if you treat them with that same love and respect, you're going to get a lot better results. And before they walk out that door, they should feel so loved and so appreciated that they feel guilty for leaving. If that is not a good way to um, embrace the people that you have on your team, then I don't know what is. And not to mention during COVID, a lot of people started learning how to be entrepreneurs. That's the other side of it. And so they're leaving trucking all together and they're like, I'm going to start this business because I have this other skill, you know, skill set that can add value over here because I didn't feel appreciated over there. So the question I would give to CEOs or people who are coming, uh, working with drivers is, are you giving them enough reason to stay? Are you making them feel important and valued? Are you honoring what you said you were going to do when they hired on at your company? Or are you just stringing them along for as long as you can until you suck the very life out of them and then they quit? Got it. Um, that is a lot. And I think, um, <laughs> well, no, it's, it's good because I think as I'm listening through all of that, it's, 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 it's obvious, but it's not, you know, common sense isn't always common, I think, in some ways. And, and I think it's yes. clear from you and somebody who's done it, who's been there, you've lived on the, the driving side. So you can say it from personal experience. You've obviously changed companies along the way. So you've had less than than uh, satisfying outcomes, we can say, maybe in other places. On, on And it doesn't matter to what end. The fact of it is that it wasn't... Um, it, it wasn't what it needed to be in order to retain you. Sounds like you're having great success in what you're doing now. Um, you're enjoying what you're doing now. You can feel it. You can see it. If anybody who's watching, they'll be able to see this as well. And I think that that is um, um, that that that's how you can speak from the experience because you know what it looks like. Um, you know what success looks and feels like, and so you can you can articulate yes. that and talk to others about that. So I think you know. That's, I think, where we should we should wrap this up because I think it's a really nice way to cap it off to kind of from this is where things can, you know, things can be really hard. <laughs> things can um, go in a bunch of different ways that you that you never expected. And this is just me summarizing what I'm learning from you today. But as we as we move, as we continue to move forward and put one foot in front of the other and and and, and sort of keep our faith um, in whatever that means to 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 you. Um, we will come out the other side and we will find a way to, um, you know, sort of make good on, on the things in which that we were dealt good, bad, or otherwise. And I, and I think you're a great embodiment of, of hearing that today. So it was my absolute pleasure to, to listen to you today and spend some time with you today. And, um, yeah, can't wait to, can't wait to see you, uh, to, to see you around. I feel like I'll, I'll cross your path again. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been my pleasure. And I hope that I gave your audience um, what they needed to really understand kind of both perspectives. The driver has a perspective and so does the company. And how can we meet in the middle? But thank you so much for having me on your show. I just I look forward to one day meeting you in person. Likewise. It was great. My pleasure having you. And um, uh Great luck in, in your mission, and uh, we're all we're all rooting for you. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see we'll see you soon. Hey, if you like the show, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, what have you. <laughs>